Hey YouTube, it's Jeff at Dark Moon Metals. Uh, it's been a while since I posted a video and I do apologize for that, but as some of you know, um, I've been having some issues uh, medically where uh, it's been hard for me to get out to the shop. And I am back today with a renewed vigor because of something that happened yesterday. Um, I was discussing with a few people the issues that I've been having. Now, I've been getting out to the shop maybe two hours a day, three hours a day at the max. And after that, I just get really sore and um, I, I have to stop. Uh, somebody yesterday said, well, why don't you just go on disability? And I thought about it for a second and it made me very, very angry. Um, not at them, but just at the whole concept. As long as I can get up in the morning, put my boots on and make it out to the shop, I don't want to be on disability. Um, I don't want to receive money from the state or from the government. Now, I'll admit that I am on Husky, I do have state medical benefits, but that's for the diabetes and for all the other things I need to regulate so I don't croak. You know, I, I do value my days above ground and I want to have as many of them as possible. But the idea to go out and actively seek disability benefits when you are, uh, when you have a roof over your head, you might not be eating steak every night, but I'm not going hungry. And I know that there are people in my community who are both homeless and hungry, and to me, going out and looking for more than I've already got, it just seems greedy. And I know that I can make a living if I just put more time into the videos and into other things. Now, one of the problems I've been running into running Dark Moon Metals is that I need to do a lighter workload. I need to actually work on smaller things. I can't um, lift on heavy mower decks and things and get them from the ground to the workbench and do a lot of the heavy work that I was doing before. So I'm changing gears and I'm working on stuff that's smaller. And one of the things that seems to be of great interest to a lot of people is what we refer to as feast gear. Now feast gear, the forks, knives, spoons, plates, bowls, all the stuff that you would bring to a medieval recreation event or maybe to a rev war event, things like that. People want period looking silverware plates and goblets and things of that nature. So I decided that I'm going to start making those types of items. Not the bowls and the plates, but I'm thinking more along the lines of the utensils. Now, I found this online. This is a wire fork and they sell these online anywhere from $6 a piece plus shipping on up to about $15 a piece plus shipping. Uh, they're all basically the same. Some are machine made, some are handmade, and honestly it's hard to tell the difference between the two. Uh, the one thing that I heard people complain about is that yes, while these look period, they rust. So they don't want to run through the dishwasher, they have to be dried immediately, they have to take care of them. And my solution for that was, well, what if I make them out of stainless steel? And that's what I've done. This is my stainless steel fork. Now I've gone ahead and I've actually forged it flat so it's not just round wire. Um, I've put tines on it. I've actually flattened the tines and pointed them uh, and did a little bit of work in the forge with a hammer, you know, trying to keep up the handmade uh, look to these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a video series today on my utensils. Today I'm going to start with the fork, but I also have a spoon. and the knife. Now I will be the first one to tell you that the spoon and the knife does involve the plasma cam. Uh, the blade and the bowl for the spoons were both cut on the plasma cam. Now as I've said in other videos, I am not a traditional blacksmith. Um, I do not make everything the traditional way. But this is what I do to put food on my table and how I survive. If you don't want to consider me a blacksmith or a fabricator or anything along those lines, not being a professional anything, you can consider me uh, an artist that works within the metal media. Let's get started. The only thing I need to make this fork is a piece of stainless steel wire. This is 1 8 diameter and it is cut to 16 inches long and it is fairly stiff. Now my source for stainless steel wire happens to be welding rod. Now welding rods start out as 36 inch. Some of them have tabs on them. Uh, I don't know what I did with the sample that I had. Uh, there it is. That stamp information on the end of the rod and it puts a flat on the end of the rods. So what we need to do first is to cut the flats off. 
Now, stainless steel is not very forgiving when it comes to blades and cutting tools and things like that, so you need something a little heavier than wire cutters. I have a small pair of bolt cutters. And for the first cut, what I'm going to do is get up as close to the end of that first stamp as I can and just cut it off. The next thing I'm going to do is line it up on my ruler and I do really suggest a ruler for this because the rod lays right up against it. It's nice and easy. You don't have to worry about a tape measure going back and forth or the rod uh, slipping beneath the bow of the tape. Uh, it just makes life a lot easier. So I'm going to mark this at 32 inches. And I'm going to cut it there as well. Let's see, where is my mark? There it is. Okay. So now I have a 32 inch long piece. I'm going to mark it at 16 inches. I'm going to cut it there. As you can see, the ends are a little ragged. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the belt sander. And rather than just take the ends off and make them flat, in this case, I'm going to put points on them. I'm actually going to start the tines while this is still flat. I'm going to do that off camera. When you make these points, they don't need to be razor sharp. Uh, you're going to be refining the tines later on. Uh, at least you will if you follow the process I'm showing you. Uh, once you have your rod to this point, I just drop it right back down on top of the ruler. It is 16 inches long. I'm going to mark it at the 8 inch line. And I might as well go ahead and do the same for both. And the next step is going to be bending it into a U. And that center line just helps me line up on the jig that I made. So I get consistent bends every time. Uh, I am looking at this project from a production point of view. So yes, I have made jigs and fixturing and things of that nature just to speed the process along. But as you can see, if I line these right up next to each other, I've already got the length that I need for the fork. All right, YouTube, at this point in the video, there might be some other folks out there that would tell you to shove these two tines in a vise and simply twist it and you're done. Well, you can do that, but I'm going to show you the jig that I made that makes the forks extremely consistent, uh, which is what I want considering that I am a merchant in a couple of different organizations and I want them to look somewhat uniform. Uh, it also helps me maintain a good level of quality. So the jig that I made is this right here. All this is, I have a stud. This will fit in the jaws of my vise so I can hold it nice and firm. Um, I've got two holes, one for each tine. Uh, this is just a random piece of hex stock that I used as a spacer. I can show you that from the top here. And I put it on angle iron because this actually sets the depth of the tine. So that controls how long the tines actually are. To load this into the fixture, all I do is insert the two tines inside. Uh, I have Allen head screws in here. Just give them a quick tightening. And that is what I use to maintain the spacing uh, for my twist. Now, my tines have a specific depth. I know that the twist is not going to go past here, and I am going to get a nice uh, curve where the handle twist meets the tines itself. It's not going to be just this sharp transition. Uh, I am not going to share the measurements of this jig because I think if you know enough about welding and putting some stuff together, uh, you can build something just like this. You can use the concept and come up with your own measurements so your fork or your um, whatever you're making is unique to yourself. Uh, I've made bigger versions of this for serving forks as well, um, but this is the jig that I use, and now I'm going to put it in the vise, and I'll meet you over there. But before I do that, I'm going to show you one other trick I use uh, with this jig and uh, how I get nice, even twists. All right, folks, this right here is the key for making easy twists. Uh, all this is is a piece of half-inch diameter round welded to a piece of 3 8 
diameter round uh, in a T. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my trusty cordless drill. Load that in, put it on low speed, and now I'm ready to do the twist. I think you see where I'm going with this already. Another tool I'm going to share with you that I have found remarkably useful when using this jig is this miniature slide hammer. Now everybody knows what a hammer does. You hit something and the direction that you're swinging in, that's where the force is going. Well, this is a little bit different. Uh, instead of hitting things away from you, this actually pulls things towards you. So you would put a hook or something on this end, and as you slide the weight back, the weight is going to hit the handle, pulling whatever uh, this is towards you. Um, I'm going to use this backwards. Uh, you'll see why. I'm actually going to be pulling in this direction and using this as my hook. Uh, this is going to help me get the fork out of the jig because when it's in there, it's in there. All right, guys. All I'm going to do is take my T put it on the end of the loop. I'm going to pull back slightly because I don't want this to twist or curl. Stainless steel is relatively difficult to bend, but if you keep a little bit of tension on it, it will go straight. And basically you keep on twisting it until you're happy with it. And that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to take the fork out of the jig. I've gone ahead and loosened up the Allens. And that's in there pretty tight. Sometimes they come out, sometimes they don't. Which is why... Now where did I put it? I swear to God I would lose my head if it wasn't attached. Here, slide hammer. Here, hammer, hammer, hammer. You know it's time to clean your shop when it takes you 10 minutes to find something you just put down. But anyway, so what I do, if you look, there's an opening in what is the handle of this, but like I said at the table before, I'm going to be using this backwards. So I'm just going to take it, put it inside the wire, take the weight, and just pop it right out of the jig. And that is what I call my preformed fork. Everything else from here happens in the forge. I am ready to move to the forge. Uh, I'm almost hesitant to call this forging because it's really not moving a whole heck of a lot of metal. Uh, what I need to do after I light the forge is I'm going to flatten the handle so it looks like that. Uh, the top part of the tines stay round. I'm going to flatten out the bottom as you can see there and create my little triangular point. And then I'm going to give some a uh, little bit of shaping to the tines over the horn of the anvil. Uh, I'm also going to use the horn of the anvil to round this out if it goes uh, out of whack, so I want to try to make that uh, nice and round. And that's what I'm going to be doing now. So I'm going to fire up the forge, and I'm going to do all that. I'm explaining it now because I know it's going to be hard to hear me with the forge running and the camera this close to it. <clears throat> so let us begin. This won't take too long to heat up at all. There are the tines.
little bit more. straighten out the handle now. All right, YouTube, so there's your stainless steel fork. Uh, the next video, I am going to be making the spoon I'm going to be introducing you to one of my favorite pieces of tooling in the shop. Uh, I will say two things about this fork. Number one, I sell it for $10 a piece. Uh, I do have a hard time keeping them on the table. The spoon I sell for $20, the knife I sell for $20 as well because there's more involved in making them. It's not just a simple twist of a piece of wire. Um, if somebody decides they want to buy all three, I will take $10 off the set price and sell the set for $40. And yes, Hard time keeping them on the table. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, if you can sell them so fast, why are you still in the poorhouse? Why are you still having money problems? Well, the simple answer is uh, these events only happen like once every three or four months that I can make it to. So if I make a thousand dollars in an event, that's great. The next week, two weeks, I might make you know 80 bucks here to a hundred dollars there, just selling a rose every now and again, uh, steel rose, or somebody brings a lawnmower into the shop to be repaired. But when I can go to these events, I do make out very well and it does help sustain me. The other thing I'm going to say is I'm not, repeat, not going to tell you what kind of stainless steel I use in this. Uh, I want you to go out and do your own research. The stainless steel that I have chosen is a specific alloy because I know that when it is used in welding, you can weld things that are uh, in commercial kitchens, sinks, stoves, uh, hood lights, all, all sorts of stuff. It maintains uh, a safety standard for being sanitary. Uh, anything that's welded with this rod can still carry what they call an NSF, which is the National Sanitation Foundation. It's a sticker. And you'll see little blue stickers that are about the size of postage stamps and just about every piece of stainless steel equipment in a kitchen. Heating this up will not change the properties or reduce its level of, uh, of being sanitary. You have to consider that putting this wire through the forge is not going to change the properties of the alloy. When, uh, when you weld with this, you melt it, you bring it down to a liquid, and it still maintains enough of its properties where it's considered sanitary when the weld is cool. So you don't have to worry about that. 
When uh, I bring these to an event, what I do is I take them, and when they're done, I usually try to make 20 or so at a time. I drop them into a pot of boiling water on my stove, let them boil for about 10 minutes. I run them through the dishwasher, and then I throw them right back in the boiling water for another 10 minutes. I want to make sure that any little grit or particles or anything that could have been stuck inside the handle and the twist is completely removed. And I want to make sure that these are safe to be eaten with right on the spot. Because at events, there are people that will show up, they'll forget their feast gear or they'll have a piece of their feast gear missing. They will go out, they will buy an item from a vendor and they might not take the time to wash it before they use it. So I want to make sure that these are sanitary as they're sitting on my table. Uh, I put a couple out for display and I don't allow a whole heck of a lot of people to handle them. So if somebody wants one, they can pick it up and look around and say, oh, this is very nice. And then I can bring out the rest and say, you can choose from any of these. So yes, there is a little bit of thought put into this. Uh, and now I'm thinking about my next video. Uh, I need to get off my butt, go have breakfast. But again, thank you for joining me. Uh, and thank you so much for all the people who have reached out to me and have asked to support me in various ways. I've had people offer me money, I've had people offer me tools just because they want to see me stay on my feet and I greatly appreciate that. But I will be completely honest with here uh, with you guys. YouTube right now is generating a little bit of an income. In fact, I'm paying my truck insurance with it. It's giving me enough money for gas and a little bit of food. If you guys like what I do, please like and share the video. Help me build a subscriber base because ultimately that is going to help me grow the business and it's going to be more sustainable in the future. So when I do post videos like this, I'll get more views, more interest generated in the channel, and that will benefit me in the long run. Uh, things are hard now, but the future is gonna be brighter. Uh, I'm doing my best to stay positive, and you folks have a lot to do with that. So once again, this has been Jeff at Dark Moon Metals, and I will see you very soon.